Bible memory. How do we learn about God? How do we learn about him? I want to present to you what I have found to be one of the most important things a Christian can do. One of the most important things a Christian can do. And uh, someone has put it uh, as a, uh, a picture here of five things. Hear, read, study, memorise, meditate and apply. Which is the sixth one really. But those five, hear, read, study, memorise and meditate on the word of God. Now first up, let me warn you today, I'll be firing many scriptures at you. There's going to be a, a real barrage of Bible verses today to present some truths that are so important, I put to you, for us today. All of these verses would be good to write them down and commit them to your memory. Write them down, commit them to your memory. I had thoughts of preparing some handout, but I didn't get a chance to complete that today. But feel free to read along with me some of these Bible verses. Feel free to say them aloud with me, if you like, to confess the Word, to confess the Scriptures. <clears throat> How do we learn about God? Those five again. Here. Romans 10, 17. So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Feel free to confess that. Say it again. So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. The more we hear the word, the more our faith will grow. The more we hear it and put it into our lives. So be where the word is. When the word is being declared, come and hear it. Play it on your audio device, in your car, at home. Listen to it over whatever media you can. I know someone was telling me how they've got it as a kind of computer screensaver and it pops up on their phone or their gadgets. So it's impressing them with the Bible truth. Hear it. Read it. Revelation 1 verse 3. Blessed is he that readeth and they that hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written therein for the time is at hand. Read it. Get your Bible and read it. You know, mark your Bible. Sometimes you've got to scribble all over it. Highlight it. Underline it. Leaf through it and visit it regularly. Read your Bible. There's a blessing from personal reading. Commit to reading the Word. So hear it, read it. Thirdly, study it. These were more noble than those in Thessalonica in that they received the word with all readiness of mind and searched the scriptures whether those things were so. People searching the scriptures, God commends that. And 2 Timothy 2.15, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Study to show thyself approved unto God. Study has great benefit for your soul. So join in the Bible studies where possible. Get some good Bible study material. Get some good Bible study books on your shelf at home or on your computer gadgets and your whatever they call the e-writers and stuff. Get some good personal Bible study aids so you can learn God's Word. A good Bible dictionary, good Bible commentary, good Bible study guides so that you can dig deep and search and question and interrogate and mine the wealth that is there in your Bible. Study it. And then we've got memorise it. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way by taking heed thereto according to thy word. How's a young man going to keep clean? Taking heed to the word of God. Thy word have I hid in mine heart that I might not sin against thee. Now some would know there's some folk who are big advocates of memory, of memorising the Bible. I think that's a commendable thing. That's something that really is so precious and vital. And notice this, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Think of the benefit to hide God's word in our heart so that it comes to mind and it comes to application. Hide God's word in your heart. We're going to dwell on this aspect in the message today. And then the fifth one was meditate. And this is a lovely one to try to commit to memory. Psalm 1. Yeah. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, 
nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season, his leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Psalm 1 is a blessed man. The blessed woman is one who knows the word and meditates therein. So how can we meditate in the word? Memorise it. Then you can meditate in it. You know, meditation follows on from memorising. So as you hide it in your heart, you can bring it back to mind, you can recall it, you can recite it, you can meditate on it. It's a fundamental truth for us as God's people to try to commit God's word to our memory. It's a very great blessing for you. You'll find if you do that, you'll be so glad. So glad you did that. The Lord says in Hebrews 8 verse 10, He will put His laws into our mind and write them on our hearts. A good way to remember the word is to write it down and display it in your home. As we see, uh, that was recommended in Deuteronomy 11, where the people of Israel were told, Therefore shall lay up these words in your heart and in your soul, that they may be as frontlets between your eyes. Lay them up in your heart and in your soul. Now, the Israelites would write the scriptures down and they would pin them to their doorposts and lintels and likewise they would carry them in these called frontlets, these containers, these boxes that held the scriptures so that they could, I guess they would open the box and, and read them and they would carry them as a, and, and they would bind them to their, to their heads and their arms as a declaration of their faith. Verse 19, it goes on to say, Teach them to your children, speaking of them when thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. Teach them to your children. Now what a blessing it is, godly parents or parents-to-be, that your children will hear the word of God in their home. And I know, I love to see sometimes how people put scripture texts on their walls of their homes. So they print out the Bible verse or they write it out. Sometimes you get nice calligraphy ones and put it in a frame and hang it on your wall at home the Bible having it displayed is really important it says something to visitors to your home it says something to your children as they see the scripture as they read the scripture they'll get familiar with it and it says write them on the doorposts of your house and upon your gates so there's that sense of writing it down and displaying it for the world to see and then we see memorize, memorize. We've seen uh, the hear, the read, the study, the memorize, the meditate, the apply. Let's just look further now at memorizing the Word of God. There's much said about memorizing the Word of God. It'll bless your soul. It'll help you to live the Christian life stronger and more fruitfully and more bountifully if you can put the word in your heart put the word in your heart write it on your mind write it on your heart Joshua, the Lord says to Joshua in verse 1 chapter 1 verse 8 this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth but thou shalt meditate therein day and night that thou mayest observe to do all that is written therein for then shalt thou make thy way prosperous, and then shalt thou have good success. This book of the law, it shall not depart out of thy mouth. So in other words, Joshua is told, you're going to speak it. How can we speak it if we don't know it, if we haven't memorised it, if we haven't hidden it in our heart? Memorise the word, it's so important. Meditate therein, day and night. 
You know, not just when you come to church or have um, a, a, a quiet spiritual time, but all the time, all the time. You know, when I was still quite a young Christian, I was still a teenager. I was not long saved as a young man. And my youth group leader set us a challenge. And it was, I was really a bit daunted by it at first. It was a challenge to commit about 100 Bible verses as a start. To commit some Bible verses to my memory. And uh, numbers of us kids in the youth group, we, we undertook to do that. We undertook to memorise these various Bible verses. Now, you won't get 100 Bible verses this morning. I've only got 90 slides, but, <laughs> but uh, no, there's uh, lots and lots of Bible verses. And you really, you could, you, I've been selective somewhat, but there's so many Bible verses that would be very much a blessing for you to commit to memory. These are just a selection of some that will help you as a Christian to grow. And it's worthwhile to do this. You know, back then, I thought it was impossible for me, when he first suggested this, that I could rem remember the Bible, that I could remember it and not have to look it up. But back then I thought, I could never do this. And you might feel the same right now. You might think, oh, that's easy for you to say. Uh, you know, I've, I, I'm not good with remembering things. But then, you know, you might say, it's hard for me to remember things, but what is your date of birth? You know that. Your address? Oh, you know, if, someone, if you had to direct someone to go and drive to your home, you'd remember the way there and how to direct them to get there. Your phone number, you name it. There's lots of things. Hopefully remember your anniversary date. or <laughs> You remember all those important things, don't you? You remember some things that are important to you. And some people have an amazing recall. My wife just, uh, she's a, a real brain box, my wife, with remembering things. I know Michael's really good at remembering things. You've got this great recall of facts and details and information about movies or sports teams or other trivia and such things as that. But sometimes it just takes a determination to commit something to your memory, doesn't it? The determination. This is important. I'm going to commit to doing this. And it can be done by making a commitment, an application of yourself, one verse at a time. Don't feel overwhelmed today. There's a lot here to take in. But one, one verse at a time. You know, who can remember uh, Jesus wept? That's a Bible verse. You've, got, you've already remembered one. <laughs> Jesus wept. You can remember that. Two words. You know, keep on refreshing, reciting, repeating, and soon you'll have it hidden in your heart. Read it over and over again. I know a good tip is, uh, as I've been suggested, is to have little cards, little, little uh, cards that will fit in your shirt pocket and write the Bible verse down. Write the verse down on one side and then the reference on the other side. And when you've got those quiet moments, just take the card out and have a read of it and then just practice. Oh, I can remember that. After a while, after reading it a few times and reciting it a few times, you'll remember it. And then you go back and revisit it to keep it locked in, as it were. One verse at a time. The book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. How does it get in your mouth? Memorization. Get it in your mind. Put it in your mind and your heart. And when you've committed it to your memory, this can help you meditate on it. Because you won't have to go looking in your Bible for it. It's in here. It's in here. The Word of God. And it'll help us as we go about our everyday lives. Why is it good to memorize the Word? Our Lord Himself sets us the example. The Lord Jesus, the Word incarnate, in flesh. The Word, Jesus. He knew the written Word. And He quoted it all the time. Some have reckoned He quoted 24 books of the Old Testament almost 180 times in the New Testament. So, you know, He wasn't carrying around a, a, a scroll in His pocket. He had it in his mind. He had it in his heart. He knew it. So he could speak it out. And so can you. Amen? Amen? You can speak it out too. The Lord Jesus says, If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, you shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. My words abide in you. He wants his word to dwell in us. And it can. Such that we can recall it without necessarily having to look it up. The Word of God has God's stamp of authority. For the Word of God is quick, which means alive and powerful 
and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder, flesh, uh, piercing asunder to the uh, asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Now, we can all have those memory blocks <laughs> where we lose things, but keep trying. Don't be put off. It's a two-edged sword. It's sharp. It's powerful. It's alive. And God's word can abide in us. It has his stamp of authority. Fill your mind with what matters. I know someone was telling me before how uh, they find it hard studying at school and, and applying themselves. We all have those times. You know, I've done further study and different things. And, you know, there's times when I had a, a uni uh, exam and I just had to just totally just brainwash myself with all the answers so I could just rattle it off. Then I could just forget it. Yeah, that's how you how you get through university. You just go just get through the exam, you know? That's what it's like sometimes, isn't it? It's about forcing yourself to remember that which really is important. And how much more important than anything else is the word of God. So fill your mind with what it needs, with what's important. It's the word of God is powerful. And uh, Jeremiah 23, 29, it says, Is not my word like as a fire, saith the Lord, and like a hammer that breaketh the rock in pieces. The word of God has power. It's powerful. It's like a fire. It's like a hammer. It just impacts our lives. It impacts those that we share it with. This is powerful. And so, again, I'm going to be using a lot of Bible verses just now, verses that would be good for you to memorize, to lock it into your memory so that you can apply the truth of these verses in your lives and recall them, bring them back to mind when you need them and share them furthermore with others that you can bless and bless your own soul with them. When you need a lift, you know, when we need a lift, what better resource have we got than the very word of God? You know, I get down sometimes. We all do. This will lift us up. Amen. Amen. It will lift you up. Put it in your heart. Put it in your heart. So Bible memory, look at some reasons why, why it's important for all of us to put the word, to remember the Bible. Bible memory helps create faith. Genesis 1 verse 1, in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. We can have faith that God says it, we believe it. It's truth. This is not fake news. This is good news. It's good news for your soul. It's truth, eternal. And the Bible shows us God as creator, as Lord, as the maker, as the master, if we'll have him. And he counters unbelief through the very scriptures he's given to us. Will help us counter unbelief and the devil's lies. Bible memory helps us to counter the folly of unbelief. The fool hath said in his heart, there is no God. Psalm 14 verse 1. Don't be a fool. Have faith. The folly of unbelief. The fool had said in his heart, there is no God. How can you be so foolish? The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament showeth forth his handiwork. The heavens declare the glory of God. The glorious sunrise and sunset, the starry heavens, the constellations, the wonder of it all. How can anyone... Look at that and say there is no God. The folly of unbelief. The word of God addresses that. Bible memory will help you. When you see someone, you can witness to them. You can tell them the glory of God. It's all around about us. Open your eyes. James 1.22, Bible memory helps put the word into action. There's an application. This is life application. The word... Shows us how to live. But be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. Do the word. Apply the word. Be doers of the word, not hearers only. So let the word speak to you and let it put your feet into motion. Let it send you and shape you. When we have the word in our heart, it'll affect our will and our walk. It'll help us to walk in the light. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanseth us from all sin. Bible memory helps transform our living such that we're walking in the light. 
and Bible memory helps transform our mind. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Bible memory. It helps with prayer. You know, you probably know more scripture than you realize. You know, feel free to say this one with me. After this manner, therefore, pray ye, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. You know, you probably know more scripture than you realize. Bible memory helps us to know the Lord. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. It helps us to know the Lord. It helps us to better know our Lord as we feast on his word. We get to know the living word, the word of God. The Lord Jesus is the word. Bible memory helps us counter false teaching. For example, John 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. And neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. You know, when you're talking to people... Uh, with false religions and philosophies. There's no other name. There's only one name. Amen. Acts 4.12, there's only one name whereby we must be saved. So Bible memory helps us with witnessing. 1 Peter 3.15, But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. We can challenge people about what matters most their soul. For example, what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? You know, some people are so uh, caught up in this material world that they think that's all there is. This is just a passing moment. In the relation of eternity, in the contrast of eternity, let's concentrate on what matters most. And we can point people to the only Saviour. The Lord Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. There's no other way. There's no other Saviour. And as Paul explained the gospel in 1 Corinthians 15, we can explain the gospel as Paul outlined it. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which also I received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried and he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. It's simple. Sometimes we complicate it. Sometimes we add to what the Scriptures say, and we get ourselves all in, tied up in knots. But if we get the simple truth and, and bury it deep in our heart, hide it in your heart, then we'll have an answer to those who have falsehood. And we can explain that peace with God comes when we are justified by faith, declared just by the one who has the authority to, the only one. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. <coughs> peace with God. You know, there's various Bible verses that we can show, as I've, I've done of late and as I love to do, as someone comes to me and says they, they want to know more, they show an interest to know the Lord. And one method that's commonly used is the Romans Road. The Romans Road. Of course, there's other ways, there's other methods, but some have called it the Romans Road. It talks people through the realisation they're a sinner, condemned, hell-bound, lost, dead, eternally dead. And they'll be twice dead. They'll have the second death. But yet there is a gift, a precious gift. Wow, a gift if you will but receive eternal life. 
God's judgment and God's extended mercy, his offer of salvation by his grace. Romans 3.23, this is just to recap the Romans road, uh, and there's other variations, but it starts off, but all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. All have sinned, we're all in the same boat. All deserve death, yet he extends life as his gift, if we all receive it. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. The deadly price of our sin is death. And we're justly condemned to that. Yet God in mercy extends eternal life as the Lord Jesus died in our place. But God commendeth his love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Even though we were enemies, he died for us. What do we do? Confess with thy mouth. The Lord Jesus, believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead. Thou shalt be saved. It says, whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. It says, for with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Now these, these fellows that got up here and confessed their salvation, they made confession. But more than just words, they believed in their heart. Yeah. You've got to have the two. Some would say, oh, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I'm a Christian. Yeah, she'll be right, mate. I'm a Christian. No worries. They say it, but they don't believe in their heart. It's not real. It's got to be heart deep. It's got to be the heart deep. You've got to know him in your heart. You've got to know, wow, I'm lost. I need grace. I need God. I need his saving mercy, his gift. And I receive it. I receive it. It's the heart and the mouth in coordination. And we've seen, as I read before, we've made the righteousness of God in him. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. Not of works, lest any man should boast. I missed that one. The gift of God, not of works. He says, come unto me, all ye that labour, and are heavy laden, and I shall give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart. You shall find rest unto your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Friends, his yoke is easy, his burden is light. He says, come unto me, come unto me. That's the invite that we can extend to those who know him not. Put these scriptures in your heart so you can make that appeal on his behalf. As ambassadors, you've got to have his message in your heart so you can be the messenger to relay it. Jesus Christ, the Son, yesterday, today and forever. He never changes. We know who he is and who we are in him. We know what he has done for us. The Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. It's the purpose for which he came. But he was wounded for our transgressions. Friends, his stripes. All we, like sheep, have gone astray. We've got to come to the Lord. Think of these truths thus far. How can we commit the Bible to memory? Use the little card system. Write it down. Write it on the walls of your home. Write it down and put it here and there and everywhere. Listen to it on your car audio setup, on your computer. Listen to the scriptures. Let them be repeated and repeated until you don't even need to hear that anymore because it's in your heart. And you can say it yourself without even prompting. <laughs> you know, as a young man, again... Um, one way you can help remember it is by uh, singing it. And uh, <laughs> now I'll give you a, <laughs> this will clear the church out now. But uh, you know, one, one time there's a Christian man on you and he put some scriptures to song. And this is one example of that. It's 2, 2 Timothy 3 verse 16 or from verse 15 <laughs> or verse 14 actually. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them, and that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. 
All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, truly furnished unto all good works. You know, lots of different ways. <laughs> there's lots of different ways we can learn the scriptures. And you know, that's just one example. You know, that's just some guy just strummed a tune and made it into a song. And of course, there's many scriptures that are in song that you can help remember too. By the way, are people feeling a bit hot in here? Is it a bit too? No? Okay. <laughs> but there's many scriptures like rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. There's lots of different ways you can help. Remember the Word of God. Put it into song. Put it in your heart. Write it down. Put it into your mind. So Bible memory helps you trust God's grace over your life. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee. My strength is made perfect in weakness. When you're feeling weak, confess this one. He says, My grace is sufficient for thee. For thee. Individually. For you. My grace is sufficient. He'll help you through those rough times. Bible memory will strengthen your faith. It says, trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. There's promises here. It tells us of many exceeding great and precious promises. Wow. There's promises here in this book that you may not have got hold of yet. It's good to read the word and put it in your heart. In all thy ways acknowledge him. And that new creation that we are. Now, we've had some new creations this last week or two. God's done a work in hearts. And this promise is for all of us who believe. Therefore, if any man is in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. That's conversion. A new man, a new woman, a new creature, a new creation. And then Bible memory helps us to grow furthermore in faith. But grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus, Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ. To him be glory, both now and forever. Amen. And then it talks about how he promises to always be with us. It says, I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee. Now sometimes we get to those moments where we think, oh, God's left me. No, he hasn't. He says, I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee. Bible memory helps us to get things right, helps us to have right doctrine, helps us to keep right with God. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Bible memory helps us to keep right with God, get things right with him. Bible memory helps us to have right relationship with the world. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. The love of the... If any man loved the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world... The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. For all that is in the world, uh, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. I said that already. And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. This world is passing. We're passing through, and this world is passing. So let's do what matters. Let's be about what matters. The will of God, it abideth forever. Find his will and do it. Put it into your life. Rather than the love of the world and the things of the world, prayerfully seek to love the Lord more, to love his word more, to love his people more, to be a lover of the word of God. And most precious and important of all is to love the Lord your God. He, uh, the Lord said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God. Love the Lord thy God. With all thy soul, with all thy mind, with all thy strength, this is the first commandment. And the second, thou shalt love thy neighbour as thyself. There is none other greater commandment greater than these. So it gets things in perspective, doesn't it? Love the Lord, love your neighbour. Be about the word, apply it. Bible memory helps us make wise life choices. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. So... A lamp unto my feet like the immediate and a light unto my path. So he helps you in the present and he helps you with the way forward. The word, it's a light. Bible memory. It helps us increase your Bible knowledge. 
Now, those who are knowledgeable about the Bible have committed the scripture to their heart. So they can say it at the moment they need to. And they can confess it when it's appropriate and applicable and where it's relevant. You might meet someone that you're talking with and, and they need a bit of an encouragement, a stir. God will give you that scripture. He'll quicken it. He'll make it alive to your heart to give that word. He can use you as his messenger to declare it, to speak for God, his words. What greater help can you give? You know, some people come to me for counselling, if you like. And, uh, you know, sometimes I get some, wow, what do I do? You need the wisdom of Solomon. You can hear both stories and you think, well, I can see her point of view, I can see his point of view, or, or whatever it be. And you, and you think, I've got no wisdom to answer them. I go to God's wisdom. Amen. That's the best answer we can give. It's the word of God, isn't it? It's the only answer that we can give. And so if we've got Bible knowledge, we'll have those abilities to share it when it's needed, which is always. And we can proclaim his promises to claim them for ourselves. Think of the Psalms. Just The Psalms is just jam-packed with uplifting, comforting words, stirring Blessing. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Confess it. The Lord is the strength of my life. Confess the word. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God and my strength in whom I will trust my buckler, which means my shield, and the horn of my salvation and my high tower. He's like a shield. He's like a trumpet, as it were. He's the high tower that we can run to and be secure and safe. And, he's, and the psalmist says, I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in Him will I trust. When you're feeling like doubting, when you're feeling like your faith is failing, in Him will I trust. We don't trust in ourselves. Our capacity is weak and failing at the best of times. Well, for myself it is. But in him will I trust. Trust in him. Trust in the Lord. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. Commit your way to the Lord. You know, sometimes we make decisions here, there, willy-nilly. It says, commit thy way unto the Lord. If you've got a decision to make, what would please God? What would bless God? What would be a testimony? of my faith. What's the right decision? What's the scriptural decision? I'm going to commit my way to the Lord. I'm going to trust in Him. He's going to bring it to pass. Confess it. Bible memory. It helps set right priorities. For example, this familiar one, but seek ye first the kingdom of God. Some leave it at that. And His righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. Seek God. Seek to be right with God. Bible memory. So many reasons. I I know I'm rushing this somewhat. It's just so so jam-packed. The Word of God is just so full and overflowing with promises for us. And Bible memory helps lock that in. It helps it lock it into our subconscious mind. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. There's two things to do there. See that? If you're in spiritual warfare, if you're feeling like you're under attack, the devil's trying to have a kick in you while you're down. Submit to God. Bow to Him. Surrender to Him. Submit to God. And resist the devil. Don't let him walk all over you. Resist him in Jesus' name. And it says, He will flee from you. The Scriptures, Ephesians 6, of course, there's much there about the whole armour of God. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. You know, we've got an armour. And one of those components of the armour is the sword of the spirit we've got a sword a sharp two edged sword this word is sharp you know sometimes when someone preaches you think oh he got me there (laughs) that preacher jabbed me here oh he jabbed me there you know it kind of talks about the the bible cutting the hearts it talks about it piercing uh, those that hear it and it it pierces me It, it cuts to the bone it's a dividing asunder. It's a digging deep. It's a, you know, the truth hurts sometimes. We've got to hear it. 
so it can change. And the word of God is such that we have a strong sword to fight off the enemy, to get that sword out when we start feeling like we're under attack. And so we shall stand against the wiles or the tricky nature of the devil. And so when our Lord faced the enemy, what did he say? It is written. The Lord Jesus himself, he quoted the scriptures. It is written. Again, reminding us, how can we quote it if we haven't memorized it? It's very important. I put to you, thy word have I hid in my heart. They have no temptation taking you such as common to man. But God is faithful. When you're tempted, when you're tested, when you're under trial, when you're tempted because of sin, when you're tried and tested, when you go through the trials of life, God is faithful, it says. And he'll provide the way of escape that you may be able to bear it. He'll help you find the way through, the way through whatever you're going through. And so Bible memory gives you the victory. Now, in all these things, we're more than conquerors. You are more than a conqueror. How can you be more than a conqueror? It's more than just someone who wins. You really win. We're more than a conqueror through him that loved us. And so it talks about the context here is a time of trial. We're more than conquerors. And it says that I persuaded neither life, nor death, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. The love of God holds us like glue, <coughs> super glue. It, we are inseparable from his love. He says, I've loved you with an everlasting love. Everlasting love. And nothing, nothing on earth or heaven in this human life can separate us from the love of God. Nothing can. Because his love holds us steady and sure. And what a comfort, what a promise. We know we're crucified with Christ. We're living for him. We can do all things through Christ which strengthen us. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. This is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Friends, Bible memory will strengthen your walk with God. Bible memory will help you to walk in victory because you've got these promises embedded in your heart. It talks about the engrafted word. It's, it's, it's in us. It's, it's part of the core and fibre of our being. The word of God is... It's, it's deeply embedded and resonant within us. The word dwells in us. And so we can be encouraged by it and we can encourage others. 1 Thessalonians 4, it talks of the Lord's coming and of the comfort we have even in a time of loss of death. The comfort of the scriptures is there for us. Comfort one another with these words. And we know that all things work together for good for them that love God. To them who have the called according to his purpose. There's promises here. If you love God, if you're called according to his purpose, all things work together for good. Now, sometimes it thinks, well, how can you say that when I'm going through what I'm going through? He says it's going to work together for good. He sees what's going to happen down the track. He sees what he's doing now when we don't understand. And it's like I've heard it said as some, you know, you see my wife's uh, tapestry work sometimes. And, uh, or, you know, she puts uh, little uh, pieces of fabric together and it's all tangled and messy on the other side. Mind you, she's so, perf so much of a perfectionist, she tidies up the underside as well. But you see, when some people uh, make something, that it all looks nice and uh, tidy on top, but underneath are all the, the cottons and the, the dra draggly bits and the messy bits. And then sometimes we just see the underside. What are you doing, God? And then he says, wow, well, he's doing something. Okay, he can see what he's doing. Sometimes we can't always see that. But all things work together for good. So for the meantime, by prayer and supplication, let, the, let your requests be made known to God. The peace of God is going to pass. It's going to surpass our understanding. It's going to keep our hearts and minds. The peace of God. We can know the peace of God. It's here. The scriptures show us his peace. It declares peace to our soul. The Bible memory helps us to maintain sound doctrine. When you're barraged by this and that and the other, it is written. 
the plain sense of the word of God. You know, I was talking to someone lately and said, because he was talking about some particular doctrine, some particular viewpoint, some particular argument, and uh, he put it to put it out there, and I said, what Bible teacher did you get that from? Because it's, you didn't get it from the Bible. You know, that's what you've got to look at. Yeah. There's all sorts of doctrines out there. Yeah. All sorts of teachings, all sorts of preaching, all sorts of ideas that, and uh, fatty, fashionable things, and flaky things. Lots of Bible teachers. Yeah. But is it Bible? That's what matters. Not what a Bible teacher says. Is it Bible? And so as you memorise it, you can say, actually... It's not in here. That's what matters. That's what counts. And it'll help you to maintain sound doctrine. It'll help you with counselling others. The words of the Bible are precious. They have power. And Bible memory helps you praise God. It helps you have the peace of God. It says, bless the Lord, O my soul. Here's a scripture you can say, well, my soul's feeling pretty low right now, preacher. This tells you what to do. Confess this. Bless the Lord, O my soul. And all that is within me, bless his holy name. You know, and I have these times, pity parties, I have these times when, ah, frustration. You've got to confess it. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. But I don't feel like it. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Tell your soul what to do. Yeah. Amen. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. I will bless the Lord. All that is within me, bless his holy name. Do what the word says. Bible memory helps you praise God. Many scriptures like this, Psalms, for example. And Bible memory helps us to honour the Lord. It's why we created. And thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honour and power, for thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. We're created for his pleasure. Now, when we worship, we're not here to make a, a jazzy tune that makes us cheek and jive. I mean, it might do sometimes. But it's not for us. It's for him. It's for him. It's for him. It's for his honour. It's for his glory. These are, we're singing unto him. It's not about having a toe-tapping, jazzy time. <laughs> sometimes we have that, but it's about him. It's unto him. That's what we're here for. That's why we worship. That's why we fellowship. That's why we praise him, because we want to give him the glory and the honour and the power. Because it's for this purpose we were created. And so, how do we increase our Bible memory? Just to close, I'm almost at, uh, almost at slide number 90 now. <laughs> You'll be glad to know. How do I do it? Read and repeat. Read and repeat. Read and repeat. Review and recite. Review and recite. It takes practice, practice, practice. You might think, oh, preacher, it's just too much. I can't do this. I've not got a good memory. Look, my memory's pretty bad. I've got to be honest with you. That's why I've got to write everything down. Uh, you know, but we all have moments when we just can't, our brain's a bit foggy and fuzzy. Concentrate on this. Get one card. Write one scripture down. Text on one side, reference on the other. Pull it out, put it back. Pull it out, put it back. When you're at the stoplights, when you're at the smoko break, when you're, when you're out twiddling your thumbs now and again. Uh, some of you got more time than others, but <laughs> some of you think you've got less time than others, but we've all got the same time, haven't we? Let's use the time wisely and put the scripture in your heart. Read and repeat. Review and recite. And as you speak it, as you memorise it, eventually you won't need to get it out because it'll be in there. Then you write down a second one. And then you write down a third one. And you keep reviewing the ones you've already learned. So they keep refreshing. You can do it. You can do it. Don't tell yourself you can't. You can do it. You might think, I'm older. doesn't matter how old you are. doesn't matter how young you are. You can do it. Bible memory will strengthen your faith. Amen. It's the most blessed thing. It's one of the most important things I did as a young man was to, with God's help, 
try to remember a few Bible verses. And eventually you'll know lots and lots of them. And you'll be so glad, so glad you did. Because when you need that word, it'll be there. It'll spring out of your heart. It'll refresh in your mind. And it'll strengthen your faith as you repeat to yourself the promises of God for your soul. And here's a good one to finish with. Now unto him, unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. Unto him, he is able. Yeah. You know, many, many people come to me and they, they say, oh, I can't live the Christian life. I'm, I'm, I'm a backslider. I keep fouling up. I've lost my salvation. He doesn't ever lose his salvation. He never loses it. He is able to keep you from falling. Amen. His salvation is assured. He is able. You've got to trust his ability to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise God, our Saviour, be glory and majesty, dominion and power both now and forever. Amen. Friends, I've been talking about Bible memory. I urge you, I challenge you, be a doer of the word. A doer of it. You might think, oh, okay, I've heard another sermon, I'll go home and forget. No! Don't! Apply it. Please apply it. Think of a scripture, some of the ones I've shared, one that is dear to you, and write it down such that you can actually remember it. Repeat it and remember it. But most of all, apply it. You know, the scriptures that talk about salvation, are you saved? You know, we've heard from some gentlemen here tonight, uh, today rather, that have come to church off and on numbers of times. Then they said, no, today, today is the day of my salvation. I'm going to commit to Christ and I'm going to confess him and I'm going to trust him. You might be just like they were. Oh, I'm a Christian. I, I go to church. I'm, I sing the songs and put my Sunday best on. And no. Yeah. It's like, uh, you know, one preacher said, uh, you know, just because you sit in a garage doesn't make you a car. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you can come to church and be lost, lost, eternally lost. I pray you put your trust in Christ. Put your trust in him. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you that we can put our trust in you and know your saving love. Lord, we thank you for your word. It's precious to our soul. Help us to lock it into our minds, even just one verse and then another. Lord, help us, Lord, we pray, that we can know the word and confess it in life situations and tell others as messengers of it, all for your glory and honour, we pray. Amen. Bless the Lord. We'll go to our final song. 115. 115. Higher ground. Pray you've been encouraged today. It's so important. I just put it to you again. It's so, so important to put the word in your heart. It'll protect you from false doctrine. It'll help you to be strong. And I urge you, I urge you to do that. If you'd like um, some suggested Bible verses, let me know. I'll email you some. Uh, I'll email you a list of, say, 100 or 50 important Bible verses you can start with. So be encouraged to do that. Let's stand, shall we?